Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Cecil here with a video here today brings a brand new video how to create your very own cool 3D text effects within Photoshop and uh, hopefully you guys can use it for some really cool thumbnails, upcoming projects and banners for your fun little gaming banners and uh, you know, hopefully it's just something you kind of like to learn to know and to understand. Of course, you can make a few different uh, reactions, or excuse me, not reactions, perspectives by just changing how you actually make a duplicate of the second text you know, that you'll see during the video if you know what I'm talking about and uh, you know, different fonts, create different effects, different colors, things like that. This is definitely a very cool uh, kind of like fundamental idea to understand and know when it comes to text effects and uh, how to make some really cool 3D ones for yourself. So with that being said, enjoy today's video. Of course, if you like, uh, excuse me, like the video, please sure to leave a like on the video and uh, that's it, enjoy. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing going right here, right now. So in front of us, I of course have my example text here and the color that I chose for my personal kind of opinion here that I wanna use would be yellow, right? Of course, you don't have to use yellow, but just keep in mind, I'm gonna be using yellow so you can use whatever color you want. But what you wanna actually first go ahead and do, right, is select your layer, hold Alt in your keyboard, take your layer and drag it right below it and that'll make ourselves a duplicate. So what we wanna do is have the first original layer, which I'm gonna actually make red, just so you know this is the original layer, right? And our text copy, we wanna have below, we want it to be a darker color than the original color, uh, excuse me, original layer, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to where it says Windows, right? And I'm gonna go to where it says Character, click on Color for the actual duplicate text. And then what you want to do is when you have whatever color you chose, even if it's blue, red, whatever it was, right? You want to take this circle that's right here and then basically drag it a little bit further down and then just kind of make it a little more darker. And you'll notice it'll give you basically two different tones or excuse me, a darker tone than your original color. And what you're going to see already is kind of it already looks 3D just by doing that on its own. And I think that's what we kind of want. We're going to press OK. This is what you guys would do. I already chose a color for my one, like my darker color that I want to use. It's like right here. Um, so don't really mind it too much, but that's how you would basically get a darker color. Um, just if you guys want to do it really quickly or easier, whatever, right? So if there's one thing to notice though, however, it is that these are not connected. So these points here should all be connected and we're going to have to do that ourselves. So there's little empty spaces here as well. Empty spaces here, places like right here. We want to basically go through all of those and actually sort of how I say connect them, right? So. On a new layer, we're gonna take our pen tool and we're gonna go zoom into these points, click on the point here, click on the point here and basically connect the original to the duplicate copy just to make sure we get a full on looking really cool 3D sort of look. And I'm gonna go through all these letters and actually put these in there as well for us. All right, perfect. So I went ahead and connected all these letters. Of course, if your font is a more rounded font, it may be a little bit difficult, but if you want to actually make it a little more easier for yourself, of course, this is where you want to use a more boxier font. In my case, the font that I'm using right now is Luckiest Guy, and it makes it a lot more easier for us as well. So on this new layer here, you want to go ahead and right click once you have all your paths all closed, right? Fill path just like so, drop down contents for color, and basically select your color that you use for your secondary darker color from your text. Press OK, press OK again, then right click, deselect or delete path, excuse me, and we're all good. A little, I missed a little spot here. I'm gonna quickly just use a brush, a, hard, a hardness brush to fill it in. And I feel like that's pretty good. Oh, the, for some reason this one didn't work, no. But you're, you'll find a lot of like few mistakes that you might make as well. So just kind of fill those in when you're all good to go. And uh, we'll just kind of leave it as is, right? So. There's one thing to keep in mind though, as well, to make this feel more 3D, we of course needed to have 3D, meaning more planes, right? So realistically, on this letter here is my best example for this X, there should honestly be a plane here, which for number one, two, three, and four. Currently, there is no different kind of separation because there are no sort of like hard angles to prove it. So what we wanna do is on a, uh, excuse me, not new layer yet, before we do that, let's go ahead and combine this layer here and this layer here, so your copy layer and your kind of fixed layer. Combine those together by clicking on one layer, holding control, click on the other one, and then control E to merge it all together. And there we go. So now I can do on a new layer, I'm gonna right click and clippy mask on this new layer. So now we have a nice new layer on this actual, you know, duplicate path here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, polygon lasso tool. And with this tool here, I'm gonna use this to make my lines just like so. This is the only line I really wanna care about. I'm gonna go on the left hand side here, then double click to close the path. Then I'm gonna go ahead and on this new layer, click the brush. And for this brush, I'm gonna go ahead and use 0% hardness and a pretty good size, right? Then for the foreground color, I'm gonna choose this color here, right? But also make it a little more darker, just like so. And I'm gonna give ourselves some nice little angles just like this, right? Control D to deselect. Now we have that one there. We're gonna do the same thing over here. 
simply kind of just hover over, go like so, and then right here in the middle should definitely be a line as well. I'm gonna just basically choose the left hand side to make the line here, just like that. And of course, if you have a little hard edges like this, you just wanna take a soft brush eraser, go back into it and get rid of it, just like that. And that should be pretty much it for that letter there. We can do a few things here as well. And of course, through all the other letters and make sure they all look pretty good. Okay, perfect. Now that all of our planes are now here, you can see in our letters, when you're actually done with that, you can actually make a new layer now. Click mask this as well. I'll probably put it below that layer there. And then with this layer, you wanna just kinda of go in with a soft brush once again. Choose the color of the actual background here, but not make it as dark as your edge color, but make it, of course, still a little bit more darker. I might even change this color along the way, but I'm gonna make it a little more darker, just like so. Press OK, and then this is where you want to kind of just add your own kind of little freestyle shadows just by going through and kind of like, you know, in these little corners here, maybe hug them, make them a little more darker, just like so. Right, and these little spots here is what's going to kind of bring it to life. So I'm going to kind of go in here and go like this, right, kind of hug this left hand side here, put a shading there, put some shading there, over here, over here. I definitely didn't connect this here. We're, we won't worry about it, but it's fine. But something like that, and with that little shadow basically kind of putting it in there, if I kind of turn it off and turn it on again, you can see, of course, it just adds a little more dimension for us and actually looks pretty freaking good. So now that we have that done here with the original text, we're gonna actually make a duplicate really quick. Now with this duplicate, we're gonna lower our fill down to 0%, which basically is the same thing as lowering your opacity to 0%, uh, lowering your opacity to 0%, but allowing your actual layer styles to still be seen, but not the actual layer itself. So, with that being said then, I can go into this layer style for the duplicate, go to inner shadow, and then throw on a nice vibrant color, about 3% distance, or 3 point distance, and the angle is at 90, so it's only kind of casting top to bottom. So with this, if I press OK, you can see it has this nice little line here, of course, your color is not going to be yellow, it's going to be a vibrant, uh, more vibrant, or more brighter color than what your, of course, face color is. But when you kind of have this done, you can right click, convert it to a smart object, Right, what this will do is kind of contain our layer style and everything still in there, but that can erase the actual layer without it kind of you know spazzing out. Right, so now I've done the little smart object, we're going to use a layer mask. Now, with layer mask, it'll automatically change your colors or your foreground, your background color to black and white, and black on your foreground color will erase. So, if I take my brush here, right, if I go over, you'll see it erases. And if I change it to white by flipping the colors or pressing X on my keyboard, it'll kind of fill in. So, white fills in, black erases. I'm going to take the black. Erase a f around the few spots on the actual edges, but leave it basically clean on the top, right? I want that line very, very vividly there. I think it'll look really, really nice and adds a, uh, a little bit of depth, uh, depth as well. Holy English, right? So now that that's done here, I can make another duplicate of the actual uh, original text. Control J this time. Now with this one, I'm gonna take this color here and make this original text color a little more brighter. So I'm just gonna move it toward the left hand side, maybe even move the hue a bit as well. Press OK. Same thing here. I'm gonna use a layer mask once again, right? Just like so. Take a black brush and basically give myself a nice gradient by erasing the top layer, just like this, right? Gives me a nice little gradient. You can kind of see the difference of colors, hopefully. And I think it looks pretty freaking good. Okay, so now we kind of have that all done for ourselves. This is pretty much where we can go ahead and kind of like basically say, select the top layer, hold shift, select the bottom layer. It'll t uh, select every layer in between. Control G to make a uh, group, make a new layer, clip mask this new layer, right? And with this little clip mask layer here, I can go ahead and say, use a brush, soft brush, 0% hardness, right? Hold Alt on my keyboard for the eyedropper tool. Select the code that's right here. That's what's gonna happen here, just like so, and let go. And then I can go ahead and make my brush a little more bigger. Click once on the text, twice over here, you know, a few, a few times, right? Then change your blend mode from normal to linear dodge add. We're going to, of course, go back into this layer mask, take the eraser. Actually, I probably wouldn't add a layer mask here, just use a regular eraser, because you might be doing this a few times, right? You can just click around and say, hey, I want a little bit of light there. You can click the brush again and be like, hey, I want something over here. Take the eraser, erase it again, and give yourself a nice little added kind of brush and all that good stuff. And then once you guys have done that, you're pretty much done. What you can do, of course, in the sort of like long run as well, is you can make more duplicates of the original text, right? Bring it all the way to the top lower the fill down and add things like, whether if you have really cool pattern overlays and such, like probably not that one, but of course I have a pattern pack myself. I can add a pattern like on the top of it if I want to, 
change the blend mode from whatever it is to like overlay you can even throw on some other honest like actual textures and stuff like that and uh yeah that's honestly how you guys would end up creating some really cool 3d really clean text that you can use for of course hopefully some thumbnails hopefully some really cool like you know, uh headers and stuff like that so Hopefully you guys enjoyed. With that being said, that's the end of the video here for me today. And if you guys are watching this video the week it's uploaded, I'm actually probably in New York now, hanging out with my family for a little bit. I uh, haven't seen them in basically over a year. So that's the plan here. I love you guys. I'll tell you guys later. Set so HQ out. Now we got to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking better, guys. Later. Much love, peace, and enjoy your new text effects.